We started by looking at the trees in the making of maple syrup and looked at the pails and how they're attached to the trees. And it was all pretty interesting. Steve took pictures of me wandering around, taking pictures of the buckets. And I, I was wondering, why do some trees have two buckets? Why do some have one? Is there a special time that they put these out? How does it all work? Um, what, what's happening? And we learned from Bill Nee and his brother-in-law, Doug Sloan, how the making of maple syrup is done. And as you see in the next picture here, this is the sugar shack. You're about to meet Bill Nee as he explains it all. How do you know when to tap the trees? We watch for the weather to be switching from um, cold nights to warm days, usually in the mid-20s um, for the cold nights and daytime temperatures that get up into the low 40s. Uh, when we start to see that weather pattern develop, that's when we get anxious about looking to tap the trees and hang the buckets. And how long does the tapping season last? It lasts, uh, well, four to six weeks, um, but more recently, um, last year um, was like three weeks. Um, the weather had changed really quickly from warm cold to just warm, not getting below freezing. Um, and it looks like um, we're getting back to that after two weeks of kind of high low temperatures. Um, we're getting back to uh, temperatures being too warm, so mm -hmm. uh, I will only uh, be able to collect that as long as we have some cold nights coming up this mm -hmm. coming week. Okay. I'm now, hoping to boil one more week. What you, you collect every day or every other day. Where do you store it until you get ready to boil it? I How? store it in, I store it in, uh, in barrels in the back of the, the sugar shack where it's shaded. I build up a, a snow mound and we have the snow and pack it tightly around the barrels um, to keep the temperature cold mm -hmm. uh, so that it will keep the bacteria from, from growing mm -hmm. uh, as quickly uh, in it and, and uh, keep it covered um, to, to try to keep the snow bank and the, and the sap as, as refrigerated as high as I can until I get to toilet on the weekends. Oh, very good. This is the grading part. This is what we're made today. And what's that called? Not, it's called dark amber. And what mm. makes it dark amber? Color. Okay. But nothing other than the color? Nothing other than the color. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the grading part is concerned, however, if you were to taste it, which I'm about to do for you, taste a little bit of it. You'll find an idea of what the cafeteria looks like. Look, very nice stuff there. Um, okay. You'll get an idea of what the flavor is. So, how's it taste, Steve? Spectacular. Very good. Yeah. Right. People really love the dark amber. That would be this color of what we're producing today. And what other kinds do you The have? other types are medium and grade A Vermont fancy, some people call it. Um, or light amber is what New Hampshire ends up calling it. So the color differences are how you go about um, determining the, the color within the grade. It's all light, it's all amber, grade amber. Color differences are what make the flavor um, more robust. The stronger, the darker, the stronger mm. the flavor. This is Doug Sloan. This is Bill Nee's brother-in-law, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. And he's going to explain to us about this. Um, what do you Gator? call it? A cooker. Well, it's, it's, this is an evaporator. An evaporator. Right. Okay. Right. Now, when Bill went to put some wood in, you said no need to because it's at six oh, and we a don't, half. Yes, yeah, this is it. The gauge right now is at six and a half. When it reaches seven, okay, which is seven degrees over uh, boiling, right? Boiling so, so anyways, when it's seven over is when we actually pull, okay? When we'll actually pull, we'll open this up and get up and start pulling syrup. Yeah. In the old days, they actually cooked with a big flat pan, mm -hmm. and then they started making these, I think, in the 70s. So, and this is a, a good sized evaporator, so for for what we do. So, so after, it, so it, then it comes down. From where? Well, it comes from this pan. It actually comes in on the side over here, mm -hmm. and this is regulated with a float valve. 
also as this level goes down, this can open up more. Okay. Oh. So, and then it, it goes in here, and then it actually circulates. It comes around. And each each turn and each section, it's more and more syrup. Till you get over here, you're getting the closest. Mm -hmm. And with the gauge here, when this reads that it's seven over boiling, is when they start to pull. So. Mm -hmm. And so it goes into this little container. It goes into here, and then all we do is open this up when it's at seven. And then we have all these filters, and we keep changing filters because there's a lot of stuff in maple syrup besides maple syrup. You mean so, like tree, tree limbs. Well, there's and tree proteins and things that little stuff that actually is in the sap. So, and we actually get you know it's called miter, and we actually filter that miter out. So you put it through the um, I'm sorry, what's it called? Evaporator. Evaporator. Yeah. But before you do that, you're telling me that you actually have other work to do, like get wood? We have to get lots of wood, yep, and split all that. We have to take all our buckets and clean them and get them ready and tap all the trees and hang all the buckets and then collect usually every other day. We do all that, collect all week, and then we boil. And we can boil with this evaporator if it's going top notch, about 70 gallons an hour. So, really? So we can pull off 70 gallons of, oh, of water me. an hour. So we can produce roughly just under two gallons an hour of syrup. Okay, that was so, my question. Yep. Yeah. So and we've got about a little over 400 gallons of sap today. Wow. So, so we'll do pretty well. We'll probably get, you know, at least 10 gallons, maybe 11 gallons of syrup. Great. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Doug. I appreciate sure. it. This is a picture of the collection wagon they use. Doug was saying that this is the final stage and then you take it to the house and boil it down. And what is the process after you take it from here? From here, um, in the bucket to, in the box. It's to double, double check, make sure that, um, make sure it is syrup, not over syrup or under syrup, right at the, at the, at the density that it needs to be. And then it goes to the box. So if it's um, over density, would that be maple sugar uh, candy? It brings it up and it starts to form crystals. It stays syrup, but it starts to form large crystals of sugar in the bottom. And that's not what you want your sugar to do, is to crystallize. The density is really, really important. Mm. So that you don't get it over, over with turkey, make the crystals get just right, it's the proper sweetness. It will preserve very well at that, at that density. How long can you preserve it for? Um, depends upon how you treat it. Uh, within a year. Uh, but I, I frozen it, I canned it, I bottled it, I put it in glass. I've done all kinds of different things. Um, I actually have some wedding favors that I did for my daughter, maple leaf. Wedding flavors, flavors, and uh, that looks as good today as it did. Wow! Thank you. And that was several years ago.